Well, here we have Mike with a position on the table that uh, doesn't look too promising. And he plays this cannon, which shows to me how much thought is a difficult enough shot, but he's managed to control the balls. He's left a shot. He's left himself a choice of three shots in. So he's playing the in off yellow. Lovely shot. Lovely shot, the first shot. Out of nothing. Most people would be quite happy to have left the balls where they were because the cannon itself was quite difficult. It had to be spot on. But Mike's managed to put them all in a nice position. Therefore, if he gets it, he's in business. Right, now he's got the cannon. Not ideal because you've got to be careful to push the yellow no further away from the centre of the table than it already is. And he's got it nice and full, which is good. Kept it away from the corner pocket. Now he'll go to work with a few cannons. See how much care he took with that one. That doesn't look good at first sight, but he's got a cushion, yellow cushion, red cannon here, which will improve the position. No end. As long as the red doesn't go in. Oof. When he got that yellow so thin, I'm wondering whether he played to get it off the cushion rather than direct. However, screws across the table into very good position here. Might be a bit thin this cannon, but it shouldn't be a problem. noticeable how much care Mike took over what was a simple shot, a little gentle pop with the rest, so accurate with the cue ball. Such a good player to take so much care over an easy shot. Reminds us how important that is to when you're in position, stay in position. That's what these top fellas do for long periods of time. That was a compromise there between getting the cannon and losing part partial position. He still just about kept the red in play. Now 
something's gone wrong there. Potted, he should be able to wriggle through the gap, but he didn't want the red in. So at the moment, just struggling a little bit actually for position, but if he can keep going for a little while longer, he'll find his touch. Side that cannon to hold his cue ball back and promote the red. The side has an effect on the second ball, um, changes the direction slightly and helps in that instance check the cue ball against the red. worth mentioning that this audio I'm putting on here is done in 2015. Unfortunately, a year or so ago, we lost the referee Michael Wright, very popular guy and very much an enthusiast both as a player and a referee. And he was a sad loss to the game. It's a little, little upsetting to watch this, seeing him quite fit and able only such a short time ago. However, the game goes on and we're watching Mike begin to get into his stride. into the 90s he crosses the bulk line to satisfy the regulation bulk line crossing he's left himself a thin one <coughs> he's okay here but he's got to be careful he's got to avoid the cover He does. <coughs> so that's a hundred and one, hundred and three with that cannon. He's still not uh, quite controlling the balls like he does when he's at his best, but um, we'll see shortly how he starts to get into his stride. After another 100 points, he becomes totally at one with the table. A 
few losers in the middle probably here. Will it only be one? Because he straight away put the red in position for the drop cannon from the left side of the table, which is better because the yellow is slightly that side of the spot. playing 369 because the angle wasn't there to force the cue ball out for the pot so making sure not trying anything silly I'm sure we'd like to make a decent break here um, because he knows he's playing a player capable if he's not in on his game and he'll want to impose himself little pot. He, he plays those shots very often with a bit of drag and side. So the drag kills the pace in the cue ball and the side just brings it out to give him a nice angle on the cannon. To look more fluent and um, more in control of the balls now. Not that he wasn't before, but um, there's a difference. Which I'm sure those who have seen play might play a lot will, will notice. As with any player, the longer they play, the more in touch they become. screw back here. No, cannon. about chalk on the table there. Um, he's constantly wiping the cloth but he's not getting chalk off, he's just pushing it into the cloth more. It'd be good if they used less chalk actually. Um, 
I notice he's not chalking up every shot anyway. While he's just stroking the ball around. Gently. There's no need to chalk up too often. And what does help is to chalk your cue and then tap the shaft against the table with a with a tip away from the bed, pointing away from the table. And a little puff of chalk comes off and it just leaves the right amount of chalk on the tip. And the bit that comes off would have gone on the cloth as soon as you struck the cue ball. And that builds up and they wonder why they get kicks. There's chalk all over the table. Brian crossing again. As he approaches 200, he's really beginning to flow now, though, isn't he? Less problems. Producing less problems, more shots being played from where he wants to play them. Lots of check on that one to so bring it back this side of the table rather than try and roll it in dead weight. Two hundred, lots of side, right hand side on that cannon to straighten up this pot, to turn the red to the left and the cue ball to the right on contact with the red. Here, yeah, Mike has a little breather while he has the balls clean. It's simply uh, something to occupy the referee while the. Uh, he wipes his cue down and takes a sip of something. His concentration is absolutely superb. It's the great attribute of these top billiard players is the ability to keep the same tempo, the same concentration on even even a shot like this. That shot has to be played correctly. Play it too thin and the cue ball goes too far. Too thick and it doesn't come far enough off the cushion. So although it's an easy pot that anyone could pot, it has to be potted in the, in the right manner. And he's taking great care over those little things, which is why, allied to his wonderful skill of course, but it's one of the reasons why he can make massive breaks, because he carries on relentlessly, concentrating, and if you're sitting in the chair, you must be wondering, am I ever going to get back to the table?
material. Something must have caught his eye there because he got up off the shot and looked looked over towards Matt, I believe, or that direction anyway, as if something moved. I don't know if it did, but he's back in the zone again. Well, this is floating white, and it's one of three forms of top of the table. The other two being postman's knot, where the object white is tight, tight ish or tight on the top cushion behind the spot, and the other is reverse top of the table where the object white is the other side of the spot just just off the straight line and a ball or so towards the ball cushion from the spot and it's a very useful way of scoring some quick points although you are limited by the fact that the the white will be creeping further and further away from the red and once it's gone about a foot you you really need to get it back behind the spot so but that's a sequence that's useful if, it's ever, if you ever find yourself there make the most of it and then play the cannon back which you'll see eventually you saw it with Matt, Matt earlier on in the previous break to so come the other side and play a cannon white to red brings Brings the white back behind the spot. This mode of the game, the all the old books and experts used to say that it took you 20 years to learn to play top of the table, and it, amateurs should never attempt it. Well, I saw a Mike play tournament in Southampton well it must have been 30 years ago 30 odd years ago and uh, he was a teenager then and uh, he made a couple of breaks of 300 plus with wonderful top of the table and I remember saying to him you know here we go the book blind crossing again um, I remember saying to him that um, you're not supposed to be able to do that at your age. <laughs> How have you managed to learn all there is to know in such a short time? And and play it as well. And he said, well, there are only half a dozen shots. I mean, it may have been a couple more or less, but I mean, you, you get the idea. Um, so I just practiced each one individually until I perfected it. And knew the shot, so then I just put them together. He may have forgotten that, but I remember him saying to him that many, many years ago. And around that time, a very good friend of mine, Roger Davies, we both know or knew Jack Carnan very well, and we both thought it'd be a great idea to get Mike and Jack together because Mike was clearly prospect one of the among a couple of others but a great prospect for the future which he's turned out to be of course and with Jack giving him some help and polishing his game a bit he could um, become well, what he is what he has become and that's what happened Roger took uh, Mike down to Jack and they Jack and Mike became very good friends. Mike still talks about him today. Um, Jack was a great player, and it wasn't it wasn't much he didn't know about the game. 
if anything. And uh, he was a great player. He didn't quite turn it into trophies, although he did win the World Championship. He, he actually should have won more. He, he was that good. He could play everything. He could play Red Bull. He could play 10, 20 middle pocket in us in the same pocket or more. Um, play top of the table and nurseries. He was very good at nurseries, turning the corner and all that. So, great all around cuist. And he taught. He taught Mike a lot, undoubtedly. And I know he said to Mike, you know, what? no good making 200s and 300s. You've got to be making 500s and thousands. And, um, well, he'd be pleased today to see how far he's come because that's what he's doing now. And in fact, Mike did make his first thousand break with Jack in an exhibition. since of course made a thousand break in the IBSF World Championship in the final playing Peter Gilchrist another fine player meanwhile Mike has lost the red um, not the end of the world but he didn't want it in, in play to potter he can wiggle through here and a couple of shots time he could screw back here to leave the cannon always better to play the cannon with both balls in front of you so that you're pushing them together rather than apart really beginning to flow now. There's a difference now in the striking of the cue ball. Lovely pace. Look at that delicate touch on the yellow. Once again, great care on the red. Left the right angle here. We approach 250. 